Okay, this is my 10 hour review of the Solus 24 tractor. Uh, I bought this new, I've just had it a short time. I didn't want to give a very initial first impression because it was brand new. I had no idea what I would think about it. I wanted to use it. And as you can see, you know, it, it has been used. Um, there's some good things and there's some bad things. So I'll just start here. Um, the tires. The tires have good grip. They're a good size. I did not do any ballast fill on the front tires. On the rear tires. I live in Georgia. I wanted rim guard, but there's none really close by and it's pretty expensive. I put in good old fashioned water. Uh, I park my tractor in a garage. It's not going to get it's not going to freeze. And water gave me 150 pounds per tire and rim guard would have given me like 210 pounds per tire. So, you know, I'm losing 110, 120 pounds, but this was free. When I first got the tractor, I, uh, I bought it to do some work around the property. I was using the bucket a lot. The back end was just spinning. Uh, even just driving, the, the back end tires would just spin. So now with the ballast, I have great control and even carrying a pretty heavy load, I'm really secure in the back. Um, moving around. So this is the first negative thing I can say. So the way this hood works, and of course the hood is all metal, the fenders are all metal except for the little plastic fender flare. But the hood latch is up here on the side, you, right there. That's not the end of the world. You know, and the hood opens this way, which I would really prefer it to open the other way. The problem I have is this tractor is just over 10 hours now, and I opened the hood, I was performing my 10 hour maintenance, and the hood won't latch. Um, you know, I don't want to slam it or break anything. I looked all around to try to find out what's going on. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but the, the spike is lining up, but I guess it has vibrated loose. You know, the, I'm sorry, this receiver part here that grabs the pin and pulls it down, that's fine, nothing has changed. The pin here that, that locks into that, it's held on by a nut here and a little nylock nut up top there. Those must have vibrated loose or shifted or something because now this doesn't depress it far enough. So, of course it's brand new, it's still under warranty, they'll fix it, but it's such a little thing, you know, I'll try to just fix it myself. And in fact, I did try once to fix it myself, um, but it's really hard to get under those nylock nodes. Um, the bucket, I have taken the bucket off and on just to do it. Pops right off, no problem. That's really convenient, super nice. Some of the other reviews I've seen don't mention this. This is a detachable front end loader. You simply pull these pins, raise this up, lower the bucket, flip this little clevis pin out, the legs come out, the legs actually attach into here, you rest it down and it's on its own cradle. I installed these two bolt-on hooks. I didn't want welded on because this bucket is fairly thin. You know, it, it, it's nothing massive or commercial grade. Uh, so I put these in with bolts. I hope if I put this under too much load, the bolts will break before I bend the whole bucket out of place. Uh, welded on, you know, the metal is what's gonna give. I was concerned about how close to put it to this because if this does deform a little bit, I don't want my quick hitch to be affected in any way. And I couldn't bolt it right here either. I did want to bolt it here because I wanted to use this weld, but that came out to be my best spot. The bucket, um, you know, it, this is just over 10 hours and I've used it a lot. Uh, you can see it's pretty well loved. I've been moving large rocks and boulders. Some are still over there. Um, huge logs, lots of dirt. Um, but, you know, it's holding up okay. I did buy a set of the clamp-on pallet forks. 
I don't know if this will show up or not, but I have a pretty significant divot right there. And there's a couple that are just marks, but this is a pretty good, no, you can't, you can't really tell on camera. And then over here, I have one also, and I actually had one of the forks break and it kind of buckled the bottom of the, the bucket. It just kind of put a crease. It hasn't affected the front blade at all. I can still grade pretty smooth. I mean, no problems with that. It's just cosmetic. Um, moving around. There are lots of emergency lights on this tractor. They're everywhere, but there aren't that many working lights. There are headlights. In case I want to get on the interstate, I have high beams and low beams. I don't know what that's all about, but I've got it. Um, there is a nice pin up front. I have used this to drag heavy things around, put a strap or a chain through there, run it under this front brace. Do not run over because this is where all your hydraulic lines are. Um, it is impossible. It is impossible to get in or out of the tractor from this right side. Uh, I really, I really dislike that. I wish this stick could be positioned in such a way that when you don't want it, you could tilt the whole unit up so that you could have a better chance of getting in and out. But it is what it is. Um, there's one concern I have with this tractor. It's kind of a safety concern. I'll get to that last. It's my biggest gripe. And anytime I use the tractor, I buckle in, even if I'm just driving a minute just around the corner, and I'll get to that in a minute. But there is a good amount of ground clearance down there. The subframe for the uh, front end loader goes all the way to the back. Again, the tires have uh, water in them. The tires are pretty nice. They're a thick wall tire. Even when I let all the air out, they were still holding their shape. Uh, the valves, the valve stems are protected on both front and the rear. It comes standard with this drawbar, uh, five hole drawbar. They talk about this as a, I've seen it called a limited category one and that's not accurate. I believe limited refers to how much travel you get up and down. This has great travel up and down. It's narrow, it's category one in. And the difference is, you can see how wide it is here, and then it hooks in because the tractor is just narrower than a standard full-size tractor. Um, but all your implements have worked for me. Um, everything, of course, is adjustable as it should be. The top link has a, a holder there, a good one with a clevis pin so that it doesn't fall out. Uh, it stays out of the way when you're not using the three-point hitch. Um, the PTO has a nice cover on it, uh, screw on, so you don't damage the threads or the, or the PTO when you're not using it. It's your standard 540 RPM, uh, same, same. Uh, the loader is made by, I'm sorry, the, uh, three-point hitch assembly and the three-point is made by International Tractors Limited. The front end loader, I think, is made by the same people. Um, you do get included standard, these half inch rear PTO remote or uh, rear hydraulic remotes. A lot of people talk about making the front end three point, uh, third function, I mean, using these. Uh, I, I might do that too. I'm interested in a grapple. Um, so everything else I have to say about this tractor is good. There's two things I'll get to very last. So power, plenty of power. Speed, plenty of speed. Uh, this tractor will go quick, as quick as I need to around my property here. Um, the front end, the bucket has a lot of power. It's got like 925 rated lifting for the bucket. I know I've had over a thousand pounds in there with big rocks and boulders and logs. Uh, these way out here are some of the logs that I've moved with this thing. Some of those are eight feet long, 12 feet long. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Good, bad, two bad things. One, this foldable rops. I am almost positive. I am the first one to notice that this is on, I think incorrectly. 
So even in the owner's manual, it shows the picture exactly like this. Let me know in the comments down below if you think I'm crazy. This is a bolt. It goes through lock washers. I mean, it's it's the top one is immovable. I mean, you can remove it, of course, but this doesn't move. This bottom is just a pin that I can pull out and remove. According to the instruction manual, to lower the ROPS, if you have to go through a garage or a small entrance way, you pull the pin out and lower the ROPS. Well, the problem is you've only got this small, you know, an inch right there. This will only go back like a quarter of an inch. It doesn't give you any more clearance. I believe this bolt should be down here and the pin should be up here so I can pull the pin, lower the ROPS, put the pin back in but it's not set up this way. So if I want to lower this, I have to remove this bolt entirely, lower it and put the bolt back in. I don't believe that's the way it's supposed to work. And it's even welded that way. This, this little pin has a, a slot right there so that it holds without spinning around. It's made this way. I believe this unit should be flipped upside down and this one should be over there and vice versa. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think. Uh, I've never actually had a tractor with a ROPS before, so this is something new to me. Um, but it is a big inconvenience. So I actually want to talk to the dealer about that, but I have not yet. And just before I get to the last problem, uh, one more thing. When I bought this tractor, I bought it new. It came with a box that was in the bucket, and in the box it had three oil filters and a hydraulic filter a replacement fan blade, three or four spare hitch pins. Um, in the toolbox, or in, in, inside the engine here, it came with a little tool kit, which I've got a screwdriver out now, but it's got your standard uh, wrenches, pliers, screwdrivers, the standard things you would need for quick, like in the field repairs. It came with all that, so I was, I was impressed with all that. Um, this fan belt, I can't quite get to it. There, that fan belt, that's, it came with an extra one of those in case you, you know, break it in the field, you can keep on going. Um, it also came with a set of receivers for this remote. It came with two male ends that go in and they were in the side toolbox there. But if I do want to use the front as a third, this as a third function, all I have to do is buy the hose. I've already got the ends and run it to the front and buy a set of fittings for that. Okay, having said all that, I know it's long-winded. This is probably the biggest hindrance to me. Getting in and out of this tractor. I am 5'10", almost 5'11". I weigh about 240 pounds. I've got the seat as far back as it'll go. And you can see there's a lot going on here. This is the that rear remote lever, gear shift, four-wheel drive, which I pretty much keep in four-wheel drive all the time, rear PTO engagement, a high-low range selector, diff lock over there. Key right there. I mean, there's only three or four inches between the key and here. Um, here's the deal. There's no room in this thing. When I, there is a step on both sides, which you can't even get in on the other side. But when I go to get into this tractor, I have to do this ballet where I get my feet here. I usually actually use this tire. I move this foot. I bring this foot around over here to get this foot. And then I kind of fall into place. That's a lot of work to get in and out of the tractor. So that's probably the biggest hassle because it affects me every single time. Other than that, I like it. So, start it up. I just ran it, it it's warm, so it's gonna start right up. But you can hear the bing, you can see the glow plug light, but once it stops binging, it's fine. It always starts right up. Um, one, one issue that I have sometimes is when I raise the bucket up, so right now it's in neutral. Now this is this is as low as it goes. You can see the bucket goes up and down fairly quick, and that's there's nothing in it, but that's a neutral. 
curls a little slow, jumps, you know, but not bad. Um, you can lower and curl, and you can or lower and dump at the same time. You cannot raise and curl at the same time. You have to do one or the other. Every once in a while, the front end, while I'm like after I've dumped out a load and I'm trying to bring the bucket down, it'll almost just slam to the ground. Now I do not have a float option. See, I, I don't have that on my on this unit. The controller doesn't have it, so there's no place to like lock that in. So that's not what's happening. But anyway, that's my review of the 2021 Solus 24. Let me know if you have any questions.